Good morning and welcome to quiz 2 prep video. Alright, so let's take a look at what we're going to be doing week 3 and how to prepare for our quiz 2. So the nasopalatine injection, the NP, we're going to use a 27 short needle because there's a low risk of positive aspiration and a shallow penetration depth. We'll insert, it's approximately three to five millimeters up to seven millimeters until the needle taps the bone of the incisive foramen or the canal on the opposite side of the needle insertion. There'll be a one plane aspiration and this is also because it's a very non-vascular area. In our landmark is basically the chubbiest portion of the incisive papilla. You'll approach the papilla laterally and our goal is to slide the needle underneath sort of that fattest portion of the incisive papilla. So what's going to get numb? Essentially the lingual tissue and bone teeth 6 to 11. That is from canine to canine, the premaxilla. If one side of the premaxilla does not get numb, so if you're approaching, if you're a right-handed operator and you're approaching the incisive papilla on the right-hand side, you've anesthetized the patient and the patient still complains, hey, I can still feel it on 9, 10, and 11 on the inside. What's happened is you haven't inserted the needle deep enough and you didn't tap bone on the other side. So by going all the way across, you make sure that you get both sides of that nasopalatine nerve that kind of exits out of the foramen. It almost reminds me of like kitty cat whiskers that come out. You've got to go all the way across. So you get both sides. So the entire lingual section of the premaxilla gets numb. And we're not going to deposit a lot of solution here. It's only about one to two stoppers, like up to just about a quarter of a cartridge. We'll see the tissue blanch, and that means it sort of turns like a whitish color, maybe like really light, light pink, and it should be about the size of a dime. So with this NP injection, we will use pre-anesthesia prior to needle insertion. And what that consists of is applying topical anesthetic for a minute and then using pressure anesthesia for another minute. We'll basically be sort of pressing behind, adding a lot of pressure after the topical. And I'll show you in class and your faculty will demonstrate for you how to apply that pressure to the opposite side of the incisive papilla so the patient feels very little of the injection. We'll also use an extremely slow rate of deposition due to the nature of the attached tissues, the bound down tissues on the palate. So, so far you've had injections where it's been very easy to deposit solution. When you're in the palate, when you're depositing solution, you're going to feel a lot of resistance with the thumb ring. You have to push. You don't want to push too hard. You want to do it very slowly and you have to have a lot of patience when you do this because we want to keep it really slow. But you, you will feel a different sensation as you're depositing with the palatal injections, especially the NP. So some local complications that can happen, you may develop, the patient may develop a small hematoma around the injection site and also tissue necrosis. And we're going to avoid that necrosis with our slow deposition rate. You don't want to see any ballooning of tissue. Maybe some of you have seen sort of that ballooning of tissue that happens when you deposit too fast. It's unlikely that you'll see a lot of ballooning with the palatal injection, but you, we don't want that. You don't want to make the tissue like this super bright white when it's blanching. <clears throat> And you also want to avoid using um, epinephrine concentrations in the 1 to 50,000 range. So 
So now let's talk about the greater palatine, the GP. Um, we'll use a 27 short here as well because there's a low risk of positive aspiration and there's a shallow penetration depth. We will insert approximately four to six millimeters, up to 10 millimeters, until the needle taps the bone anterior to the greater palatine foramen. Now, how do we find that foramen, that anatomical landmark? What we do is we place a cotton swab, and it's nice to put a little topical on it first so it sort of glides, and that's a hint from Dr. T. Place a cotton swab at the junction of the maxillary alveolar process and the hard palate, just distal of the first molar. And then you move the swab posteriorly back towards the throat until it falls into the greater, the GP foramen, usually just distal of the second molar. If you think that the foramen is up around the first molar, you're not in the right spot. You have to slide down. It's definitely closer to the second molar. It's all the way back there. And once you feel that depression, it sort of falls right into it and you will take your needle and you will insert just anterior to that foramen and then gravity will take the anesthetic into the foramen. And we only need a one plane aspiration here because it is not very vascular. So what gets numb? Essentially the lingual tissue and the bone of the posterior teeth up to and including the first premolars on one side immediately to the midline of the palate. So the nasopalatine injection, we can get the six anterior teeth, the premaxilla with one insertion. We have two separate GPs. We have a left and a right. So the lingual tissue and bone of posterior teeth up to including the first premolars is on one side. So if you give a right GP, it, the teeth, the lingual bone and tissue of one, two, three, four, and five should get anesthetized. Same thing here. We will use that pre-anesthetic method, topical anesthesia for a minute and pressure for another minute an extremely slow rate of deposition. On the GP, you won't feel as much resistance here to deposition as you do with the NP. Local complications, hematoma, tissue necrosis, we already talked about how you can avoid that. The other thing that you may see is the patient may experience a herpetic or an aphthous ulcer outbreak after a GP. It can be difficult to figure out if it's a herpetic outbreak or an aphthous ulcer outbreak. So you may want to question your patient if they return and say they have sores on their palate, but whether they have ever had cold sores. Because if they have, that might indicate it's more of a herpetic outbreak. And it doesn't mean that you've injected them with herpes. It just is something that can happen after a palatal injection. So posterior superior alveolar nerve block, the PSA. So we'll use a 25 short needle because the reason we use a 25 gauge is because it approaches 100% accuracy determining if we are in a blood vessel. And we'll use a short so we avoid the pterygoid, pterygoid venous plexus. We use a two plane aspiration because this site is very vascular. And we want to confirm that we're not in a blood vessel because the first aspiration you do, the bevel of the needle may be resting on the inside of a blood vessel. Essentially, you have stopped right in the middle of a blood vessel and that bevel is just right against the blood vessel wall. You apply the negative pressure and what happens is the blood vessel wall gets sucked in and no blood will enter the cartridge. So you do a rotation of a quarter turn 
you aspirate again and then you'll get that confirmation positive aspiration that you are in a blood vessel. 10 to 16 millimeter penetration depth. Usually it's 14 to 16 millimeters. You know, someone that's very petite, you may only go 10. The anatomical landmark. So we want to go superior and distal to the distal buccal root of the maxillary second molar. So up and behind the distal buccal root of the maxillary second molar. We do not want to contact bone on this injection. You shouldn't contact bone. If you're feeling any bony resistance, you're not in the right spot. You may need to come out and insert your needle a little more laterally, or we may have you just come out and redirect the needle, not come all the way out of the tissue. So what gets numb? Pulp. Buccal periosteum connective tissue mucous membrane of the maxillary first, second molars, and the mesial buccal root of the first molars in 72% of patients. And look at how much we give here 1.2, so two thirds to a full cartridge for the PSA injection. Troubleshooting, the patient doesn't get numb. You probably weren't in the right spot or you didn't go deep enough. You didn't get behind that maxillary tuberosity. Also troubleshooting pterygoid venous plexus. We're using a short needle. We're hoping to avoid that area because that can cause the local complication of a hematoma. If you insert the needle into the pterygoid venous plexus, the patient can get a significant hematoma from that. Um, tissue sloughing would be from the topical. I think we talked about that in the last video. Systemic complications here. We're going to avoid it by a slow deposition and a lot of aspirations. Now, for people that are questioning the 45, 45, 45, inward, upward, backward, we will go over that in class using a skull. We'll do demonstrations for you. There are no questions about those angles on the quiz. Okay, have a great day.